Hey there! Have you ever wanted to know how to go beyond the EWM standard? In this series of videos, we'll show you the tools and tricks to enhance your EWM. Hey there! And welcome to one more new series of videos in my channel. And this series is called Enhance SAP EWM. And in this series of videos, I'm going to explain how you can enhance the main functional parts, so those parts of the process control which are used very frequently, how you can enhance the standard here. And the target audience or the video is helpful for you if you are, for example, a technical consultant or developer and you're working in different modules so you don't have these deep insight into the EWM uh, technical objects so far. So you will get a very quick, um, a very quick start into the, the technical parts of the different um, areas and also um, easily find the standard enhancement options here. The video series is also suitable for you if you are a functional consultant with a little bit more experience. So uh, you know all these stuff uh, which is uh, written in these um, well-known books and uh, in the help and everywhere else and you want to get a little bit deeper into the strategies. Uh, you know there are always these tiny little details which are not explained in the books and for those of you I will point out the spots or the objects that you can study to uh, gather all these little tiny details about the different parts. And we start today with the put away strategy. Uh, this is something which is uh, uh, usually part of every warehousing project. So let's jump into the content part right away. We um, will look at first um, where or we will, we will I will explain at first where you find uh, the details. Uh, that's most important. If you want to study something, you need to know where to find it. So I will explain, I will show you the objects which are important for you. And then the second part of the video, video we look at two examples, how to uh, enhance. I have two example scenarios where I will explain how you can adjust the standard strategies based on your needs. Now, as I said, uh, there are um, many, many information in these books, but at some point yeah, you would not get all those details. Uh, it's impossible uh, you would have a book like this. So uh, for those of you who are missing the details, we will, we will uh, unshade those for you. So the heart of the EWM put away strategy is basically function group, uh, function group SEWM put bin dead. Uh, and with all those other videos, keep in mind, I will put a link in the video description, uh, a link to the corresponding blog post where you can copy paste all the uh, object names so you don't need to make notes now. Uh, this is a function group and <laughs> you have these includes carrying the function modules and all the subroutines. And if you just uh, click around a little bit, you will notice that uh, the, the names of the subroutines and function modules are already uh, pretty meaningful. Yeah, so if you just browse around here, you will notice that uh, for each of the strategies, you will find an object uh, carrying the logic. Uh, it does not need to carry everything. Uh, there are a lot of uh, subroutines and subfunction modules inside, but uh, it's a good starting point. And you can uh, grab the one which is uh, applicable for your given project or requirement and then get into detail here. Uh, another shot of the function modules and you see, for example, if you deal with hazardous goods over here, or if you uh, uh, have issues with storage type determination, just an example, yeah, and as on the previous slide, this is self-explaining. Uh, if you want to set up a bulk uh, uh, strategy for bulk storage and you're missing some details or you want to enhance 
Uh, have a look at these subroutines that they will most probably help you. Yeah. Here's another example, storage section determination, something that uh, every one of you probably knows. Now, I will not go into detail here, just an overview about what you can find in the function group that I mentioned before. So how can we enhance this stuff here? I will not <coughs> go into every different kind of enhancement techniques here. Uh, first of all, because I'm not a, um, um, a pure technical guy, yeah? I will... I simply don't have the technical basis here. Uh, I would just give you examples for how to use the standard bodies. Uh, this, is, this should be uh, your first choice anyhow if you want to enhance something in EWM. Uh, and this is uh, the only uh, option we will focus on here right now. Although I know that there might be uh, different implicit, explicit enhancement options. Uh, which we could also use, but that should not be uh, the scope of this video. So this is uh, the enhancement spot you want to look at, uh, SEWM ES Core PTS, and you already see that there are lots of bodies, and again the description for most of them is self-explaining. Uh, just uh, for example uh, Take this one, change storage section search sequence. Probably with this body you can change the storage section search sequence. Uh, so even without analyzing the coding, you might find the um, appropriate one just by looking at the description. But of course this is usually not uh, the most accurate way. So I will show you within the first example how to find uh, uh, the one that you you might need for your requirements. So in the first example, yeah, and really this is just a weird example that does not uh, need to have any um, business case, a business scenario where it's useful. I just want to show you how to, uh, in this example, I just want to show you how to make use of data from the warehouse task. So example number one, we want to exclude specific bins uh, from the ones which are possible to be used for put away, we want to exclude some of them just based on the quantity from the warehouse task. Yeah, so this is weird. You can say if the quantity is is uh, 15, no matter which unit of measure, I want to exclude all bins uh, starting uh, with the uh, letter B. Yeah, just a weird example. I uh, just want to show you how you can make use of the data from the warehouse task to exclude specific bins. Uh, the body to be used is uh, the core PTS third sort and <coughs> the um, <coughs> the places where this body is called. Uh, one option to find is, is to use the interface method and check where it is being used. Uh, that doesn't necessarily give you all the uh, places. Uh, sometimes they are called dynamically, but it gives you at least a rough overview and it gives you some of the spots. So here you can see that this body actually is called at, at uh, many different places. And this actually makes sense. Uh, because if you are using um, a strategy for pellet types or a bulk or an, a normal put away for instance, different coding is being called and you still might want to call this body at these different places. Uh, so that on the one hand makes sense and on the other on the other hand you see in the screenshots from the call stack that I made here that even if you are using the same uh, strategy, so in this context just the normal put away behavior, you see that here in the subroutine bin determination 1 we are calling the body and then a second time bin determination 3 we are calling it again. So here you just need to run some examples for your process and put some breakpoints over there and find the most suitable spot for you. Uh, I cannot give a general rule here. Uh, the most important thing for this filter sort body is this changing structure. Uh, uh, table, sorry. So L H L P L A G P L, and this table contains all storage bins which are uh, currently um, in the area of possible bins 
and this table is being hand over by the standard to the body. So what you need to do in the body, uh, in your implementing class and methods, is to adjust this table. Uh, so if you want to remove specific bins based on specific criteria, uh, kick them out. If you want to sort it in a different way, uh, sort this table. And this is what you're going to do uh, in this in the implementation of the body. And here you see uh, actually what is part of the structure. That this is the most important thing in this body. And here you uh, see some standard data from the storage bins. So as I said before, uh, you have the storage bin. And if you want to uh, remove something based on the name of the bin compared to the warehouse task data, uh, just remove it from this table and hand it over back to the caller. Yeah, this is uh, the parameters of the interface method of the body. And here you see that uh, this uh, is underscore LTAP that is carrying the warehouse task data. So that is what I mentioned before. I told you we do it based on the quantity. You can take anything from the warehouse task and you also see that you can take anything from the product master and make any kind of sophisticated rule or check and based on this change this table of bins. Now this is the table which will later be used to um, assign destination bins to the warehouse task. So when you remove something here or change the sorting, you will have direct impact on the result of the worst task creation. Second example. Now I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going to accelerate a little bit. In this example, we want to change the put away rule. And here, not based on worst task data, but this time based on product master data. So let's say based on the base unit of measure. Yeah. So let's say the base unit of measure is bottle. And in this case, I want to have put away rule addition to stock and with the base unit of measure as a case. I want to do put away rule uh, empty bin. Now again, stupid example, just um, to show you what you can do with the put away rule based on product data. And again, we look at our enhancement spot that we checked before. And again, <laughs> we find something just uh, uh, based on the description, change storage type search sequence and put away rule. And you know, in customizing, uh, there is uh, the put away rule um, provided as part of the storage type search sequence, for example. Uh, we have other places, but uh, here we have it in the search sequence. And again, you can find it based on the description. This is not the accurate approach. Uh, if you want to <coughs> find the bodies which are really uh, the, the ones for you, um, specific scenario you need to uh, check the coding and find the spots where bodies are being called uh, might wanna, uh, I want to I might might want to make another video where I show you how to do this in a structured way uh, so that you do not need to uh, scan every line of the coding but find it a little bit faster I will do it in a separate video so let us focus now on this body here and have a look at the interface method again that's always a good first step to analyze whether the given body is an option for you because you can only change uh, what you get yeah if you have a body which does not import the data that you need for your logic it wouldn't help you at least you need something to be imported that you can use to derive your data from uh, your, your information that you need and in our example here, we have everything we need. We are importing the put away rule yeah, and we are exporting the put away rule. And in addition to this, we have a lot of data about our product. Again, we have the where's task data, of course. But in this example, we analyze the data from the product. So that would be a very simple coding for our example. Yeah, if the unit, if the base unit of measure is a bottle, then we set this variable to let's say addition to stock and if the unit of measure is uh, a case we set it to empty bin 
And this is very simple example, but I think uh, you can you can think further on your own uh, that you can make a sophisticated logic based on any kind of product master data and adjust the put array rule based on your needs. Yeah, same would be true in this context for the storage type search sequence. Okay, that's it for this video. And I hope you could learn something. The main takeaway, the things that you should keep in mind and that will, uh, I'm pretty sure that will help you in further projects for your daily work. Uh, there is a function group. Uh, you get it from the uh, video description, which is carrying basically everything around standard put away uh, coding. And there is one important enhancement spot, uh, which is carrying uh, uh, lots of bodies, which should actually help you to realize almost everything in terms of uh, custom put away requirements, which is not covered by the standard. Uh, I think it's very rarely that you cannot cover uh, Z requirements uh, Z requirements in terms of custom requirements, which cannot be covered by a standard plus the options in those bodies. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested if you, if you really have something, if a, a valid requirement, yeah, where you have good arguments that it is valid for your specific customer industry, whatever. And if you cannot cover this requirement via standard or via the bodies, I'm, I'm very curious what this requirement is. And um, yeah, please put it in the video description or send me a note. Uh, I'm, I'm curious here uh, to find a solution via standard or via those bodies. And uh, um, that would be that would be nice if you share this. Yeah. <coughs> okay, that's it. I close the content part here and uh, hope to see you next time again.